Hello everybody, we're going to make some bases for Sisters of Battle figures. Now the ultimate goal is to have some figures like you see in the corners there, but also check these out. So these are for my Cypher Lords, and it's a pretty simple process. You're looking at bulletin board cork and some Sculpey. And our bulletin board cork is right there. This is more of the standard cork that you see. I really enjoy the bulletin board cork, and we'll go over this more when we actually make the base, but there's just a little more texture to it. It just actually looks more like rocks. And this is really the key right here. So this is actually some baked Sculpey that we've got on hand here. And it's important that you see this. So it is the original white Sculpey. It's not super Sculpey. It's not the red, pink, purple polka dots, whatever, the ones in the little packages. Basic box like this. It's actually the least expensive stuff. And I've got a little package of it here. It's always best to keep it wrapped up when you're not using it because it will dry out on you. And you just take this and, well, you can use a, just a roller to thin this out, but actually use, it's called a clay extruder. It's actually a pasta machine. Now I have a bunch of different YouTube tutorials that show you how to work these bases, and bake the Sculpey and that sort of thing. Figured here it's more important to just use the Sculpey and show you how to paint the base because you want to have Sculpey that does that. It's nice and flat and guess what? It gives us a nice surface like that to paint. And what we want to replicate is actually something more along the lines of this right here. So this is the, the goal here. We're going to try and paint one of these bases here. I think possibly the one on the far left because that has just sort of a interesting pattern to it. Now you can see how this works with an entire army here. I did this for my whole sister's army. So you can see that same theme of the basing, that green marble with the lettering runs through the entire army and it really makes, it, just, it sets a scene, it turns every miniature into a little diorama. Now there's a couple of other materials that we're gonna use. Here is one. Vallejo has a ton of these. There's, I think, maybe a dozen different types of this. This happens to be the earth texture. There's sandy paste, red oxide, brown earth. There's just tons of these things. We'll just go with this one. And we have here some, I think this is the rubble. This is the fine rubble here. I think this is from Luke's APS. And I'll try and write up some of the sites here at the end where you can get a few of these things. Now actual sisters of battle here we have a few we're just going to paint one of these during the next session the, the painting tutorial phase of this but i just wanted to show you what it is that we are going to try and base very simple tools here some wood carving tools and these i think you can get a couple of these for maybe two dollars or so it's another way to do some carving on your bases we've got ourselves paper clips and this is a really important thing what you want to do as soon as possible is match your drill bit to these paper clips because getting a whole bunch of these is easier than getting a whole bunch of these guys and just the tiniest measurement will mean that these things are too small or too big so as soon as you match up paper clips to a drill bit <laughs> get a lot of that drill bit because it's easy to get these not so much the drill bits now, just safety-wise, this is something that you're not going to see as much, but you'll see it in some of my other tutorials. See all those cut marks and everything there? It's just a rubber jeweler's block. Now, getting things on Amazon is a little more interesting than it used to be, but when that gets normal again, these are maybe 5 $6, and you can see the cut marks from razor saws that are used to cut miniatures off of sprues. You can see drill bit marks from where I'm drilling these kind of holes in the feet right here so it's always handy speaking of hands this is one way to keep your hands from getting sliced up so what we're going to do now is we're going to put some of these materials out on the table here we'll make a few bases and then we're going to paint up one of them and then we're going to do that next so very quickly here i wanted to discuss just a few things that the concept of making the sculpey bases now you can see what we've got here is a, a base that's technically larger than the base. 
but it's one where again figures could still come in base-to-base -base contact so this is another helpful thing about the cork versus just doing say something like this we take the scopey we break it and we just put it on our base right here if you have some overlap like this it's gonna be a lot harder for figures to come into base-to-base -base contact but when you've got a figure that is this tall you can see yes the sculpey surface is bigger but it can be no problem base-to-base -base contact that is why i like to use yield bulletin board cork and what we can do is uh, we can break that and you can see right away that's a really interesting rock formation by itself i use this all the time for so many different types of bases but what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can't get ourselves a few interesting little pieces here now this you can see we've got some overhang what if we spin this around like this all of a sudden if i do that now it's no problem for a figure to get in base to base contact because we've the height is here and oh look we've got ourselves we could put some skulls over here we could do something interesting or just put another piece of tile like a, a fallen piece of tile like the floor is falling down this way let's give that a shot now normally when i do a basing video i do a whole bunch of these but this is supposed to be a little bit of a shorter exercise for you so it's sort of a truncated version now what i normally do when i have my army painting series on the patreon page is we'll do something like this a unit of cipher lords where we base eight i think the splinter fang was nine ten figures something like that we'll base all of them because the idea is footprint we got two very different footprints here we've got a footprint like this and we've got a footprint like this so now this one potentially might work a little better on something that is more narrow like that and you can see her footprint is it's just up on one foot doesn't need as large of a base as let's say something like this and here's our other one right here so you can see that because otherwise her feet are really pushing the limits of the base now all of a sudden there's a little bit of room on either side of the feet so what we are going to do is as much as i'd like to do that this one right here well you know we'll still do that the other reason i sometimes have a larger base on a miniature with a smaller footprint is i get to show more of something like this i'm gonna make this picture bigger for you so see those these are bases that i tend to do on on lead characters i think this one was for a penitent engine that really big base that you see there it was a 60 millimeter right there it's just it's like an open canvas so especially now i think the new penitent engines are on one leg so yay even more open space what we're going to do here is grab our sculpey and there's two different sides now as i as i do this i'll say look you really want to bake these pieces of sculpey on something like a ceramic tile don't use the cookie sheet you're not going to be real happy with that because what can happen with the cookie sheet is it bends and then you end up with a not flat piece of sculpey another problem that can happen with the cookie sheet is that you get too much heat transferred to your sculpey and then it actually i don't want to say well i can catch on fire too it actually can catch on fire so here's a nice little base right here what we can do and we're going to do this i always show it the safe way me i just do this uh, let's take my wood carving tool and you can see i'm gonna gently carve away i'm not using any force what am i doing i'm moving the actual piece of sculpey so i'm not doing this bringing the knife to my hand i'm it's almost like a belt sander here i'm feeding the sculpey to the knife the knife is not moving the sculpey is so it's a little bit safer if you're real worried about it well do something like this look at this so i'm taking these little pieces out of the floor here with that carving tool 
We've got another one over here. See how that just takes, look at that nice fractured little chips out of there. Gives it that extra sense of realism, and less like it's some kind of piece of Sculpey that's been snipped off. Oh, look, we've got this extra piece right here. What are we going to do with that? We could do something like this. And actually have it sort of look like it's been collapsed. I'm going to break that even some more. Here, see again, we're going to use our little, little piece of rubber block there. And look. Knife sticks into the end of the rubber block instead of my hand. So it just, if you're concerned about safety or whatever, that's one way to do it. So we'll just real quickly here, a little super glue up there. I do recommend when you're doing this, make a bunch of bases because if you do this just too quickly, your glue's not going to have a chance to dry and it just, it'll make kind of a mess. So real quick here, let's say you didn't want to use the piece of Sculpey down there. Here are, see, look at that nice piece right here. We, we can break that off, and now we've got ourselves another rock. So we could put that right there, put something else there. Maybe it's a bolter of Space Marine head. I used to love doing that. I, my Grey Knights especially drove my gaming buddy absolutely nuts because all of a sudden every time somebody killed something one of his slanish marines would a head would pop up on one of my bases so we're grabbing some of the earth texture here throwing on one of my craft brushes and we're going to put this in a few places but first we are going to start right here unlike glue look what this does see how it, it just it builds up yes there's a texture there but look at how nice and strong that is. And you can get a container. Well, like I said, Amazon is a little trickier right now than it used to be. But when it ever gets back to what it's supposed to be like, you'll be able to get some of that for probably between 11 and say 13 hours. We've got a gap over here, right? What we're going to do, I'm going to fill that up with this texture right here. I will say you're going to want to be careful. This stuff doesn't stain quite as much. That's the sandy paste, really not at all. But the red oxide paste, I learned that the hard way. That gets on your carpet. You've got an interesting color of carpet in that particular spot. So be aware of that. Now, I don't even have any Elmer's glue or PVA glue or called different things in different places. I'm just going to stick with this because it dries a little bit faster, but it's also, you can see it's a little bit stronger than glue as far as, look at that. It's a nice big old clump of that. Fill this in. Adds a little bit of strength to our, our little overhang here because, well, Sculpey breaks. That's why we want it but also Sculpey breaks, and we have to give it a little bit of extra support. So now we're good to go on that, and we've got some of our pieces of Sculpey here. What we'll do, and I'm going to just toss a couple of dots of glue there. Which way do we want to glue this piece? Let's try it this way. So what happens is you can see how this, not so much of a staining, but this was the red oxide. My fingers would be all red. It supports that Sculpey a little bit. Now I'm going to maybe do is even break a smaller piece here. Again, we'll do this the safe way. Oh, let's just throw a dot of glue on this here. Quick little dot of glue. Like I said, we're not going to spend a whole bunch of time on this. We're just going to make the one base. I normally make a bunch. So there we have it. Real quick, we're all set up. Now, if we wanted to, we can grab some of that gravel texture. 
put this over here. And while it doesn't necessarily have the sticking power of, say, a regular glue, it's got enough holding power for just a little bit of this mixture of fine and coarse sand. We're not going to cover up all of the texture on this, just a little bit. Actually helps to strengthen the sculpting. Now, you know, you got some bigger rocks like this, you could try and stick those in place. There's no exact rule to this. I've This is kind of a more recent find for me. If something doesn't stick, let's throw something else in its place. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry. And then we're going to show how to paint some stuff on there, just uh, like we did with our Cypher Lords here. So we'll be right back with that. It's time to get this base painted. And there's a couple things I want to talk about first. Now, Sculpey and actually the bulletin board cork, they're pretty absorbent surfaces. You don't necessarily have to prime them before painting. If you are, this is, I just sprayed with the airbrush some of my Steino Res primer over the top. It's from Badger Airbrush. You can just brush this stuff on too. For years and years, we just brushed on this primer. We did not have an airbrush, but we had this primer and we loved it. So, like I said, you could just brush that stuff on if you wanted to. It's the same exact type of base. Same cork, same Sculpey, same everything. But what we're going to do, just to save some time here, is we're going to go directly into the painting. And I'm going to go with some of the Pro Acryls here. We're going to have some of the transparents out. The black, the brown. We've got our green over here. In some ways, these are a little bit more like contrast paints only. A little bit thicker. And you only need water to thin them down. You don't need the contrast medium or anything like that. So here's your transparent green. We've got some other colors here that we'll use, some lighter ones. The bright green, golden brown. I'll tell you what they are when they come out. And you can see them out here on the palette. Black, brown, green. The pale green. We've got a our pale uh, yellow over there. This is actually a transparent yellow here. And then just sort of a bluish gray. Got our usual craft brushes number eight rounds you can see when they're a little more pristine a little bit newer they have a nice sharp tip on them when they're a little bit more well worn you can see that the tip looks a little bit different and the idea there is actually to have something like that so check that as we spin it around look we got a point that's an awful lot like this but we have this wider surface and you're going to see that play out as we work on this here the palette, by the way, it's actually the lid of a Chinese food container, a chamois sponge, just like the sponge that I'm using over here, a piece of parchment paper. So, boom, that's all it takes. What we're going to start out with is some of that transparent black, some of the brown. And I think if you're looking for, say, a contrast paint equivalent, something like Wildwood, probably would you get you there. And we're just going to start off here. I'm going to get some some paint here real quick on our cork just get that covered and as i said you, you do the priming thing first it'll stick that much better but actually there was a long time i didn't even prime the bases again this is it's more about getting this you guys through this as fast as possible here so then we can move on to the next video and get you painting that miniature all right, so that's pretty much good to go. I'm going to even work in a little bit of that blue-gray here. Another thing to keep in mind with the Creature Caster paints is those opaque paints, they cover. I mean, wow, it's, it's almost like they're made out of primer. It's pretty wild. So when you get... Let's say you're looking to do something, I don't know, Imperial Fist or whatever, and you employ some of those those golds or yellow colors from Creature Caster. Oh my, they're going to cover. So you can see how this, you know, give it that chance to just sort of blend and mix together. So we got all kinds of nifty colors already. No dry brushing need or anything like that. Now we have to determine, okay, we want to do that that round sort of a symbol let's let's get it maybe about this much with our green marble here i want you to at least be able to see how to paint some of that 
Let's see, we're just kind of sketching this out here. And you know, instead of trying to repeat that pattern down here, we'll just make that more of a piece of green marble there. And you can see how the colors had a chance to sort of blend together. Now what we'll do is we'll let, give that just a few minutes to dry. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to set up that lighter section. So let's grab a little bit of this. Go into our lighter color here. And again, we're just letting it mix around, letting it mix together. And we're just all we're looking to do is create a portion of a circle here. That's all we're looking to do. Now, on those bases that you see in the reference picture, I actually carved in a line right there. And I carved in a line over here. Like I said, if this had been an army painting series, I probably would have shown you all of that process. But here, this is more of a truncated version. So now we're pretty well set. Got that set up well. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll go back over this and get some lights there too. But let's see what we can't do playing around with some of our greens here. And what we'll do is, you can see how the brush strokes sort of moves along. I mean, even right in there, I think you could, yeah, look at, see how there's, how it's kind of marbleized on the brush here. When you try and artificially just paint that in, it has a tendency to look kind of artificial because humans want to see patterns in things. And nature kind of doesn't really like that sort of pattern. It, it prefers doing its own thing. And that's what we're going to try and do here. So we have those sort of blobs of the darker green. We're going to now take some of that lighter green. Just kind of go like this. So we see it. Look at that, how it's just mixing itself. You can't, you just can't buy that kind of blending. Here, look at this. <laughs> what just happened there? Oh gosh, there's a it's a, a 2D art form they call it. Oh god, I think it's called like paint pulling or something like that, or, or they call it something where they literally just plop the paint colors together and then drag them across. Well, let's do that again here. Let's do another one over here too. And now I've taken some of the paint out of the brush. And I'm actually going to go back and grab a little bit of green here, and we'll just move this around. We're quite literally just pulling paint around. And we can go back into this and put more. If we want to have really precise oh, veins of whatever in there, we can do that later. But let's let's just have that do its own thing for the time being. I think that's what we should do. Now let's think about our little more goldish type pattern here. We got some of the transparent brown, a little bit of the transparent yellow. And we're gonna we're gonna start our our little Celtic cross here, I think. Yeah, we're gonna let that marble have a little more time to dry. I'm going to actually get a little bit more of the transparent brown in there. And we'll go to a smaller brush. For now, though, I don't want to get too, too involved with the smaller brush just yet. We start out bigger. We work our way smaller. All right, it's, it's, you can see here where it has a bit of an Inquisition symbol look to it. But then when it gets here, we sort of change from Inquisition symbol to more of a Celtic cross. And that matches the army that I was doing there. It was the, it was again, Celtic themed army. It was the, oh God, it was the, the Sisters of the Raven. That's what it was going to be. Well, it was actually, <laughs> it did do the army itself. Now, I think that's somewhat wet enough to do our little bit of a borderline there. 
and it's a little more. And then, while we let that dry, we can maybe go back in here and place some more with some lighter, lighter colors there. But look at, see how that mixed really nice. You can see a little bit of the bluish gray in there. Yes, you can, you can dry brush over this, but sometimes it's kind of neat to actually get in here with some, just some regular paint. And while that is still wet, you can see how that gives us a nice little blend there. Dry brushing has a tendency to just look like dry brushing. It's kind of obvious. There's ways that you can, with glazes over the top of it, make people go, oh, I don't, I don't see any dry brushing there. I think, well, this is really putting the damp in damp brushing right now, I would say. Let's say we're switching the color around a little bit as we march around our base here. I am going to throw some of this green color on our broken piece, as you do. Let's get a little bit of our lighter color in there, too, and we're just dragging it. We're just going to drag that paint across there, and you see as that starts to dry, look at all those little... I mean, it would be impossible to paint that. Look how thin that line is. We just basically had to let the paint do its own thing. That's kind of, you just have to let it happen. And that's relinquishing that control is not always the easiest thing in the world to do. I understand that. What we're going to do now, we'll grab ourselves a, one of those smaller brushes and see if we can start to sharpen up some details here and what are we doing it's basically just a line now I could have carved in this line with some of those carving tools that I showed you but sometimes believe it or not it, it proved to be faster to just paint it in and it actually looked in um, some ways a little bit more like it didn't necessarily have the three-dimensionality of it but scale wise because it's, it's you can paint it smaller than you can carve it I guess if I'm looking for a, a phrase and that was another rationale behind just painting it in like this let's see it I sketched that in now I start to work on some of the outlines a little bit more here Gives it that, again, that sort of Celtic cross type feel. Let's get our interior now. And even at this, well, let's say this is all you need. I mean, right here, I think a lot of people would be thrilled just to have this. So when I do those army painting series that I was telling you about, at every stage from the basing all the way through to the final freehand designs or whatever it is, we talk about basically the currency of time do you have enough time to do all of those fun things that maybe you did in your color test figure or do you have to kind of look at reality and go you know what if it took me 15 minutes to do that and i've got 20 figures do i have that many <laughs> sections of 15 minutes to work with maybe if that is too much you say you know what okay we'll do we'll do that on sergeant champions something that is more of a special type of a figure you know okay so here as a sister superior uh, maybe the the banner bear and icon bear maybe this again something that is a special character you just reserve it for that now you can see we've started to create a bit of a kind of a highlight area here we don't want it to just be the same level all the way across we are going to go into some of our lighter color here and our and let's do some around us so look at how this just starts to take shape I also want to think about 
some staining on this because when I first started to do the Scopey bases, I would paint these broken floors that yet had the appearance of, well, they were just put down. It's like somebody went to the tile store, grabbed a bunch of beautiful new tiles, smashed them up, and put them on the floor. And that didn't make a whole lot of sense. So that is something that I kind of learned. Basically, I looked at my wife's, and she was painting all kinds of really neat staining on there. What do I mean by that? Well, here, let's take some of this. It's not going to be quite as what we did with the marble, but say we're taking the side of the brush here, and instead of that just being one solid mass of color, I'm going to actually knock down my brightness a little bit so you can see. Ah, I think that's going to help a little bit. There you go. Always keeping in mind that as soon as I start to add something like, say, that pale yellow this suddenly becomes much brighter i can get some more of that taken out of there and what we're going to try and do is almost paint a bit of a ridge line here a little bit of a ridge line this is where we simulate that texture of carving. There is no texture. We're just going to pretend that it's there. And we can we can take this as far as we want. Also have to keep in mind, guess what? The figure is probably going to be standing right about here. So always think about the footprint too when you're doing this and that could save you from going, well, you know, I really didn't need to paint that because, oh look, figure's just standing right on top of it so that is another thing always to plan out so we got a nice little ridge line there let's let's go back into our lighter it's that pale green what are we going to do we are going to i'm going to take even some more of that away i'm going to create even a lighter vein of marble here but what are we doing we're basically playing off of what's already there playing off of what's already there now let's make that darker so what we're effectively doing is continuing that and we're going to continue that down here i'm just going to throw in a bit more of my green marble here again let's see look we just drag that brush across let's get a little bit more of a lighter color in here that's more like it now let's see i'm going to grab an even finer brush here and we're going to grab some of our transparent black some of the brown let's do a bit of a some cracking on this here paint some cracks and it's actually not a bad idea to sort of connect the cracks so we're going to do that here a bit more and i have one maybe over here And it just sort of works its way out from there. Well, let's see. Let's, let's have it go that way too a little bit. So we got some cracks in our tile floor now. And then we'll go back the other way. Ah, good. You can see that. Give that ever so slight of a highlight there. How's about some right here? Again, it creates some dimension where there just or there is none. There's no actual crack in there. We've just painted that on. Doesn't really exist. 
Can you carve those in? You sure can. And let's say you go to the YouTube channel and check those out. You'll see once where I actually carved in the texture. You can visit the blog. That All those addresses, they're scrolling right across the screen for you here. You can check all those out. And now that the Patreon page, when you do that, <laughs> just be prepared. If you do that Army Painter Pledge level, get ready because by the end of this month, there will easily be 400 hours or so worth of videos to watch. You don't have to watch them all, although you got some time now. But there is a lot of content there for you. And it covers everything, metallics, non-metallics, TMM, OSL. It's an alphabet soup of miniature painting. A big old alphabet soup. Now down here, this is not a bad place to think about painting in some of those cracks. Let's say you got some weathering powders or something like that. You could throw some weathering powders over this, make it look like dust. Maybe when we get to the, the painting video and we stick the figure out here, maybe we can do something like that. Just see what happens. It's always worth experimenting. That is something I preach all the time. Always worth experimenting. Are they always going to work every time? Maybe not. But you'll be glad that you did. So this is no time at all. We've really got ourselves something that uh, looks like a bit of something. We are going to get some lighter areas here on the rest of this. Yeah, a little bit lighter now. Still not a dry brush because look at all that. But what we're doing is we got this this craft brush here. And look at what it lets me do. Just let me drag that brush across the surface. Now, there's a million different varieties of these. This is uh, from Hobby Lobby. You can see I got $4.99. There's a dozen of them there. You can get them. This is not this is not from Hobby. This might be from Michaels or whatever. It's an entirely different set. But the the principle's the same. The idea is the same. When the brushes start out, they are pretty. You can see how they had a nice point to them. But then when they get that little bit of a worn Look at look at this. Make it. They work great for oil painting too, because again, you're you're making a super soft filbert brush that holds a ton of paint. So see, how we're starting to catch some of these edges here. Still not a dry brush, yet we catch the edges. Let's do that down here too. Now maybe there where it's going to be something more like a, a dirt, I guess. It will take some of the transparent brown and just walk a little bit of that into your dirt like you do let's get some of that over here look at this our original washes still not dry yet still waiting for those to dry we can even put a little bit of that in here too why not or we could do this with weathering powders like i said i know gw's got some technical paints maybe you throw those in here too trying to make this as universal as possible so that you can say well, okay i don't have those uh, if, if i was going to do this in the reaper clear and liner paints obviously probably clear thalo green clear brown clear blue the usuals now i could have done some text around this here but i wanted to show you the cracks you know, I really want to do some text over there, but sometimes you have a little too much action. You don't want too much. I'm trying to just continue that. See those cracks down into this. Give it just a bit more. A little extra hint of dimension to it. So we'll work these cracks in a little bit further. So that's not too shabby there. Just 20 some odd minutes, boom, you got yourself a nice little, practically a diorama style base. So thanks a lot for watching this video, everybody. I will throw in a few finished pictures of this, but what we'll do then
is our, our next video. I'm going to say we're going to try paint this one here. So we can put that there and we can still see all of our glorious marble in freehand. So I'll catch you on the next video, guys.